Jamie Lapina, killing the cable scene, killing the wake scene, getting married. You could say she's on an endless spring break. Jamie, great to have you. Great to have it's you. It's great here. to be here. Busy, crazy. Your your last couple of years, you've been traveling, getting married. It's been uh, you've been all over the place. A lot going on. But it has been awesome. I think everything just kind of, you know, came together. I'm super focused on wakeboarding, uh, super stoked to be married. And it's just been a really cool couple years post-COVID. You know, everything kind of stopped and maybe let me take some time, get some priorities straight. And yeah, now it's just, it's been in full swing since then. Yeah, a little, uh, a little before we were talking about this last year being like the first year that everyone's back out and about in full swing after COVID. And you're talking about just the energy of wakeboarding and, you know, the international scene, the wake scene. Um, yeah, why don't you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, everybody, maybe the word is refreshed. Everyone feels like they have a new sense of kind of purpose out on the water, especially uh, from the girl side. You know, there's been so much progression over the last few years. And I've really felt that on cable. And now it's kind of boats following following suit. So this past Moomba final that we just had um, out in Australia was probably the best women's boat final that I've ever got to be a part of. Right. Even the whole, prior to the final, like the riding throughout the whole comp, I thought was, was kind of just next level. So it just, you can tell that everybody is just energized and ready to go. And really passionate about wakeboarding right now and i think that's what we need if the sport is going to keep going up so it's really cool to see it's definitely been apparent that i feel like there was maybe a little lull in in women's wakeboarding and i feel like that like in the last two years po you know covid to at, you know post covid i feel that there's just been an explosion of women's progression and like almost like a whole new vibe it's like it's like old old women's wakeboarding is gone and there's like a whole new look of women wakeboarding. No, it, it's a real thing and it's so exciting. I think for me, I kind of have really wanted to focus on progression for a while and you get caught up in other stuff, right? You got your comp results and other things that are also really important to you. But after watching the X Games in Aspen this year, that girl's big air, did you watch the big air? I saw some final? of it, yeah. Oh my God, their progression, two girls, double, or double flips, triple flips. Like it was probably one of the coolest things that I've ever watched. And I was sitting on the couch with Jack just being like, like, I want to go ride. There's so much stuff that they're doing. If they can do three flips in the dark over ice, like what can we do? You know, exactly. so, and I feel the other girls are really in that same boat, you know, maybe taking some time off through COVID, everybody kind of got to ride for fun again. Mm -hmm. Personally, that's what happened for me. I took some time off and then came back to it just naturally when it felt right. And I think maybe everyone's in a good headspace. All the girls are just ready to show that, you know, we can we can do cool stuff too. And it's awesome to be part of that. Very cool. I, that's And that's cool that you bring up like watching X Games and, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like men's wakeboarding like has always been so heavily influenced by other sports and i feel like um that for for the first time like visually and um just apparently like women's wakeboarding like is just so influenced in like the style factor and just the technicality and obviously you being on the forefront of cable and wake it's just, it's refreshing to see that women's wakeboarding is just, you know, and you're carrying it big time, but like, you know, it's cool to see that it's really, you know, coming into fruition. It's, it's, it's awesome. I think, you know, to give younger girls the inspiration that, hey, you can do more. You can, you don't have to set limitations on your trick goals or maybe you have a really far-fetched trick idea in mind, like scale it back, learn one thing at a time, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Like I've always been fortunate that I never feel the pressure to rush when learning a new 
new trick or trying to get something done like if it takes me a few sets awesome if it takes me a few months like that's okay too but um I think I'm just fortunate that the like my friends and the sponsors that I have behind me are really cool about letting me explore that progression yeah and um having that backing is really cool I've seen I've seen I've been there for the, your process there like when you're learning those rewinds and being in the tube and you're just doing a bunch of threes so and... many 360s. <laughs> I think yeah. I did probably five months of just like the fastest 360s I could but still trying to not rush the takeoff right that was the hardest part for me it's I know this 360 needs to be fast but if I don't rise, no. I'm not going to have time. But exactly. So, I mean, there's things that I'm, you know, working on now that I felt, oh, I'm really close. But now that I take a step back, am I really that close? What do I have to, you know, step back and look at? And, and you know, and even the stuff that I am landing now, I'm striving to make it better, too. So, no, very cool. Yeah, like, I want to grab the double flip. I want to grab, you know, back five. Just start to up. There's always There's always more, you know. There's 100%. always room for more. So, hundred percent. So, like, I remember the first time during a product shoot when your mom brought you to like Ronix, <laughs> yeah. out, out back on the buy level, and you, you know, it was a all all the guys. Mm. You're like pretty much. I think that day you were the only girl back there, mm -hmm. and you know you're riding with, you know, that's when like you the, know the best parks. I mean, everyone was still like mm. riding right in the buy level and and you just strap strap in just, right there in front of all these you know wakeboard legends literal legends but like i had no idea you know yeah i didn't know the gravitude of the legend status but you just went out there and 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 sent it first first go ollieing on to you know big ollies and gnarly rails and from like from that perspective like looking at it from there to where you are now like what was like after that first session? Mm -hmm. Did you envision yourself being here now? Oh, that's a very Zen saying. Be here now. I like that. I have that tattooed on me, actually. Do you? Yeah, here now. Right right here. Here. Yeah. yeah. I got it after me and my sidetrack from the question that you asked me. One of my friends and I got in a car crash like 2019 now, maybe. Mm -hmm. We were coming home and. Someone pulled out in front of us, and I couldn't even like hit the brakes before I T-boned them. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, it was it was not fun, but we got tattoos afterward, and um, yeah, I got here now because you could be you know here now and then gone the next day. So it is very Zen saying, but also has a lot of meaning behind it. So no, yeah. but yeah, not, I have that tattooed. So no not kidding. Yet, not yet. No kidding. Yeah. Um, did I envision myself being here now? I think it was a dream to be here now. Um, I think throughout, I think it's been 10 years almost since then, maybe, yeah. maybe 10 years since I've moved to Florida and started wakeboarding, maybe like it, eight since, you know. Yeah, first, I, was, I was thinking right around it's, coming up on a decade for it's sure. Pretty, which is crazy, you know. Um, I think there were times in the middle where I took for granted the opportunities that I had and kind of wish I would have been more focused and not taken so much time off to do other stuff, you know, um, but I think through all of that, I'm really proud to be here now, and I'm very serious about it. This is probably the most serious I've ever been, and I think you need all those experiences in your wakeboard career. You know, you're going to have so many highs and lows. 100%. Without them, I don't think that I would have the drive I have for it right now, because I look back and I was like, oh my god, there's still so many things that I haven't done that I want to do, yeah. you know, and you don't know how much time that you have to, to wakeboard. So I think looking back on like the first time I came out here and, and rode, like, yes, the dream would be to be here now. And I think whenever you're, you know, having a bad day or you're not feeling like you're progressing enough, just remind yourself, like, even when I was pressure washing the other day, I was like, if you weren't out here doing this, you'd have so much FOMO. Like, just remind yourself that where you are now is awesome. And yeah, I don't, I think, I mean, I owe so much to like the Ronix family without everybody involved. It just wouldn't have been the same experience for me. Right. Yeah. So. But backstory on the pressure washing. It's not that yeah. Jamie's just pressure. <laughs> I just but, come out and pressure wash. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what Jamie does. <laughs> that's she what pressure. what really do on Team Ronix now. But so. one of the best pressure washers every year before the product shoot, 
Jamie pressure washes the bi-level setup. It's my favorite job. It's so satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I get a little carried away and then, but no, it's. Exactly. But it's awesome. And, and being, I've talked so much about how women's wakeboarding has been progressing and drawing inspiration from other women's sports, but for sure would not be there without the boys either. You know, coming out here and riding with them and kind of earning their respect through riding, just being like, hey, look, like, I can do it like, you know, I can try right. and do it like you can. And and so always having that support system from them, again, I feel really fortunate because I love riding with the girls, especially now. Everyone has so much hunger. Mm-hmm. But the boys will be like, try that. And yeah. it's something that you probably would never think about. Um, or I'll watch them, you know, if there's a big gap that I'm worried about or a rail that I'm not so sure about hitting. Like, if they're doing this over it, I can at least make it, you know? So right. it definitely, yeah, you without without them, wouldn't have, wouldn't be the same wakeboarder, I don't think, that I am now, so. And you were saying, like, a little bit ago when we were talking about, the, you know, the here and now thing, you're, one thing that's evident, too, you're t- saying how serious you're taking your riding right now, mm-hmm. but... From me, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I get to, you know, film and watch all of you mm-hmm. progress and do your thing. It's very evident that you're taking it serious, but also having more fun than I've ever seen you have on the yes. water. And I I don't know how those have come hand in hand. I, I do think, you know, again, having some time off and really realizing this is, this is what I want to do. And there's so much left that I still want to do and feel like I can give. And that's, that's fun. I don't know, learning, trying to learn new things and feeling like you're at a point of, of being able to do that is just, it's, it excites me every day. Like this whole past week was so windy and I would just wake up so grumpy because all I want to do is just have good water so I can like try new stuff. But I need to remind myself that it's okay to not try new stuff every set. Like right. I can still go out and just right. cruise and, and that's been fun too, you know? And I think I'm just, it's so fun right now because I just feel fortunate that I get to wakeboard. It's its cool, like, I, to have this much stoke about it is still kind of foreign to me. Like, it's, its yeah, it's awesome. I don't know, but. But you weren't crabby because you were hangry. No, I, maybe sometimes. <laughs> I have gotten better with the hanger over the years, you have to admit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's better. Yeah. It's better. Speaking of being hangry, mm. um, <laughs> you know, what, one thing that I really remember was uh, your first... Is it me being hangry? <laughs> well, no, this ties into it. Was your first time on the road for oh, social strength. I was going to say Texas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was some hanger there. There was a lot of hanger. <laughs> we did not eat for this whole... Backstory for those who don't, I feel bad calling out Timmy, but I call him out. He's being called out. One of our reps, um, he doesn't really think about lunch <laughs> like ever, like, he just doesn't. And um, yeah, so we didn't eat lunch, and I need to eat lunch, you know. Um, and I just remember, I think it was Dom who would just constantly try to be like get cliff bars yeah like would always come out of the out of the grocery store like here cliff bars and then someone else would be like beer so i'm pretty sure i lived off beer and cliff bars for a week Mm -hmm. um one of the best weeks of my life for me that was that trip was so cool and that was you know i'd hung around with everyone at the lake but the social shreds were kind of the first time that i really felt like you know, like a part of the squad. You know, right. We're on the road, and it was that trip was hectic. Like we drove, what probably seven hours in a day. Uh, we had a lot yeah, of stops. Yeah. yeah. We, we we did it without lunch, um, yeah. but yeah. And then you're along for the Midwest ones, where your family got to come out, hit up yeah. West Rock Chicago, and all the other spots. My brother yeah. rode for the first time in forever, which was really, I I love social shreds like. When we were doing those more often, you know, pre-COVID, I thought it was so much fun. You got to meet so many people. Everyone was stoked all the time. And great team bonding. Like, when, I think it was that hotel, one of the hotel managers in Texas that was, oh, it's so cool that your dad brings all of you guys (laughs) around working. It was you, Parks, me, and Dom. Yeah. And they thought that Timmy was the dad of all of us. That's funny. That's, That's not... Okay. That's like, funny. But, yeah. 
That's a funny family demographic that, now that I think about it. I always it. think when we are on the road and stuff, like, what do people think we are? Who, you know? Like, if we're at a restaurant, they'd be like, how, how do those people all know each other? Hopefully, like, a like a traveling family <laughs> band. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like the Von Trapp family singers yeah. or something? You'd probably be the Possibly. only one who could... I want Parks can... Yeah, Parks. Parks you yeah, you yeah. guys can carry the... I'll play the triangle in the back. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah. like... Um... You know, like, all these experiences mm -hmm. that you've had from, like, going through the ranks of, you know, riding and then s being on the road in Europe, through America, all, how is that, like, switching gears a little bit, how is that, like, influenced, like, what you're looking for? We're talking about, like, you riding, like, your actual, how does that influence, like, what you want in a in a board and in your in the product that you ride uh dependability i think for me is the most important feature of a board going in between boat and cable took me probably 10 years to figure out that switch where i mean it's, there, it's there's big differences so big differences so i think when i can just rely on the gear that i'm using and know that every time I strap my boat board on, it's going to feel like home and same for cable. And I think that's why I love our gear so much because it just, it feels like home, you know, at this point. And I like that. Yeah, it does. And it just, yeah, it's like a totally part of my wakeboarding now, you know. And right. I think what the spring break does really suits my cable riding and makes it easy to slip right back into that when it's time and then i've gone back to riding the qtm which is something i rode forever mm -hmm. i love their eyes i rode that for i think a season and a half mm -hmm. and then i had one of you know the qtms at the house and i was like i'm gonna try this again and it just again felt like home you know it's like a comfort like an old pair of jeans it's an old pair of jeans for me and i i thought jake was like it actually looks that looks really good like that board seems to work for your riding so right. I think they're just, both of them are dependable and they suit my boat and cable riding, the needs that each discipline has. Mm -hmm. And like the spring break being really just free, having nothing for me helps so much because some people who ride boat and cable kind of like to keep the feel similar, but to me they feel so different. Right. So the spring break is so like playful and fun and just loose. And then the QTM has a bit more structure, of course, being a boat board. Right. But I finally gone down to point eights. I used to ride one go. inch fins. Now I realize it sometimes can be a bit much. Yeah. You know, the smaller fins are a little beneficial. A little more benefit. I think it really works, especially on the on the QTM having just that little bit more freedom to move around. But yeah, both. Both are just, you know, yeah, feel like home. I like it. Yeah. I like it. And, and this current graphic, yeah. I have to say, really um, in, envelops Jamie. It does. It's it's perfect. Yeah. Right? She's sitting over there. Can't see her. Amazing job. Like, the color, the whole vibe. I've had so many people come up and be like, that's like the best graphic in the whole line no offense anyone else oh i mean i've but i've seen so many i mean guys and i'm so many people different like, walks of life cool. exactly but it just it's inviting you see it and you're you're like hmm i like that you know yeah. i want that yeah you know and i think um having the shape that we did last year with the flat ends i think that also makes the board look a lot better too it just yeah i love mm -hmm. it when we're when we decided to roll it over. I was like, yes, you know, right. I could run this graphic for like ever and I'd be happy with it. Definitely. So, yeah, for sure. And I'm glad we are because there's a lot of people who have reached out being like, oh, I, I really want one, but I couldn't find one yet, you know, or we're fully not in stock. So it's cool that people are going to have another year to grab it if they want to grab it. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Where do you think that? Um, Cause like there's only a handful of women's wakeboarders now that are cable and boat do you think that though you know the amount of women doing both will continue to grow or do you think that there's always just going to be you know i, I feel like there always will be cable specific and boat specific mm -hmm. but do you think that like i mean 
you're kind of, you know, influencing more women to maybe step out of their comfort zone. And, and if you're, if you like one, try another one. I would hope that it could become more of a thing. I think wakeboarding is a pretty small sport already and having that division makes it even smaller. There's so many times throughout the year that I have to choose between events because right. there's a boat and cable event overlapping. And for me, I'm like, why can't we all just be together? Right. Um, and I get that, you know, they are two very different disciplines and cable's very much in Europe right now. Right. Um, but I kind of hope that even if, you know, young girls or even, you know, boys coming up, they don't get the opportunity to compete in both because that can get quite demanding mm -hmm. to at least just ride the other one, you know, if they have a chance. It's really beneficial overall for your wakeboarding as a whole. I think, um, for example, landing blind behind the boat comes from doing a million backside 180s off of or onto rails, mm -hmm. you know. So I really hope that people, if they have the opportunity to, I know not everybody has the same like resources and access to right. two boats or two cables, depending on where you live and stuff like that. But it would be really cool to see more, you know, combining of the two back in the day when they had, you know, the events with boat and big air and cable and, and I yeah, the big Red Bull events. Those were the coolest thing to me. Yeah. Because it really showcased wakeboarding as a whole. Exactly. And I think being a wakeboarder, you know, I, you're a boat wakeboarder, you're a cable wakeboarder, but just being a wakeboarder overall, I mean, like winching too. The, yeah, totally. That's something that I would love to dedicate time to, but every time I go, I'm like, oh. Right. No, I 100% I agree. Being a wakeboarder means, you know, embracing everything about being a wakeboarder yeah. yeah i mean obviously you can pick and choose and some people you know don't have the accessibility to both or whatever just... but i feel like really being a wakeboarder is embracing the true essence of yeah. wakeboarding yeah and i feel really fortunate that i did have the opportunity to do both and still can make it work i've felt more pressure than ever the last two seasons to kind of pick one um, I'm not going to do that. I'm glad you haven't. I'm not going to, but I think I'm the only one right now really doing that. You know, I think there's, there's people who will co come to like one or two cable events maybe, but for the most part, you know, no one else is really doing four or five boat events and four or five cable events. So, right. um, it's, it, there's so many events, but I wouldn't change it at all but for example this year in june i'm not going to ride boat the whole month because i'll be in europe for mm -hmm. cable which i'm so excited for it's going to be the most awesome month but you know so that that's a month off the water right and i'm very aware of the fact that what if i didn't take that month off of boat what if i just you know what could i so it does feel like a sacrifice at times to you know, split my time because I've always wondered if I just did do one, mm -hmm. what could I do with it? Right. Um, but I just, I don't know. And I totally understand like people having to commit more to one than the other, you know, as things have gotten more demanding, you know, on the boat scene, like I totally understand why, why you have to put your attention. Like I get it a hundred percent. So I'm hoping that it never comes to that for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's a struggle, but it's the most beneficial struggle for your overall wakeboarding. And right. if, if you're over one, you can ride the other and it just yeah. totally you get over one and they and, and they can kind of you can be inspired, have one inspire the other. It does. It 100 percent does, you know, and the skills are transferable, you know, so for a long time after I would ride cable for a while, I would come back. On the boat, you can ask Jake, he would get so mad and just not edge into the wake right. because I'd like flatten off for a kicker. And finally, you know, the switch is, is and easy. And Jake would just yell at you. Oh my gosh, to edge, edge. <laughs> he'd, I had so many times I'd look at him in the boat, he'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, but it's it would be really cool to see, you know, I think there's some possibility for the future to have more collaboration between the two. Um, you know, I've talked to some people in, in, in organizations and there's an awareness of it. Right. 
so hopefully we can make it you ever think about like trying to do a woman an all women's event that that encompasses everything well moxie pro did that right that's right and it was that's amazing right. and you won it I did boat was, and cable which was that was like i remember watching megan do that oh my gosh it had to be like seven or eight years ago maybe in houston i think it was when the boat and the cable events were together right and i think she she won everything yeah and i was like that's so cool you know and then to to do that you know seven or eight years in the future i was like wow you know because that was something that she did then that i thought was just amazing and was so inspired by it so to do to do that was it was that was cool very cool but they have it's just i feel like it's been hard throughout covid to you know get the backing for events 100 percent. but i know that there's people out there that want to do it so if there's ever the opportunity of course that'd be awesome to to make that happen yeah all right jamie well on like uh you know on a day-to-day -day level, level doing our thing uh you know, I get to, you know, shoot and hang out with you and we get to do a lot of fun stuff together. And that was really cool uh, getting to talk to you about your whole... Uh, yeah, that your, was really fun. Your path, path, being here now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just want to say thanks for uh, coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me on the show. Of course, of course. And uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Awesome.